So hello guys, another day, another craft show. Ben, aren't you excited? I'm excited to be able to drop this stuff off, set up, and get out of here. So I love this craft show. This is our second year doing this show, I think. Yeah. And what's fantastic about this craft show is they let you set up the night before. I love that. It's a little bit of a car jumble right now because I don't think that people realize that they closed the street the night before. Even though there's signs everywhere. signs that say street closed. Street everywhere. Closed. So we're in a little bit of a kerfuffle right now with uh, people in the street. But we're waiting to pull in. We're here at our time. We have our spot. We are ready to go. I'm very, very excited for the show. And we're going to get set up. And then tomorrow we get to come back and do the thing. I'm very excited. You excited? Yeah, I just watched that guy almost run that lady over. Oh. He was backing up so fast that she was crossing the street. He wasn't paying attention. So, here we go. Yeah, and can did can.
So we have the first wall up. We're gonna put up the four walls for the night and this is how we're leaving it. It does tend to get really rainy here overnight. So like a flood will happen and we are expecting rain. So I didn't wanna set anything up fully. I think we're gonna end up with an L, an outside L setup. I'm really, really excited about it, but we're gonna assess the situation in the morning. When we get here, we're gonna get here bright and early, set everything up and we'll be good to go. But we laid the grid wall across our two tables, which is how we plan to set things up. Sorry, we've got the blinking of the hers lights happening here. Um, the grid wall across the two tables and all the stuffies are on top of the tables. So nothing is gonna get wet, which is fan. Fantastic. Nothing's on the ground. And we found out we're gonna be right by all the kids' blow ups tomorrow. I'm so excited. Ben's doing such a good job. I am holding. However, I also can barely reach, so therefore, Ben is doing such a good job being Mr. Man. Look at him, Velcro. Oh, such a good job. So handy. Wow. Say goodbye to the stuff. It'll all be inside overnight. Say goodbye, stuff. Goodbye, stuff. Goodbye, stuff. Come and buy stuff. Accurate. This show, I don't know if you can see it, probably not because it's getting dark, but it goes for blocks and blocks and blocks. All right, all right, all right. It is morning. We are on our way back to the craft show. We're in the car today because the car is air conditioning and the van is not. <laughs> and we unloaded all the big stuff yesterday and we get to stay set up overnight again till Sunday. So that's awesome. It's Benjamin's birthday today. Birthday. Happy birthday, Benjamin. We're doing a craft show. <laughs> I love you. I asked you before we signed up if it was okay. You said yes. This was your decision. Don't you dare. How dare. That level of gaslighting. <laughs> we love this show. It's a really good show. We're going to make lots of money because it's your birthday. Happy birthday. It's September. N no, we're not putting the rest of that song on YouTube. Oh, I know. That's why I stopped. Okay. So it's almost 8 o'clock. We could have gotten here at 7, but why the heck would we want to do that? The show doesn't open until 10. It's not going to take us two hours to get set up. So we're going to eat. We're going to get set up. So everybody say happy birthday to Ben in the comments. He's old. Yep. <clears throat> Ugh, 32. So old. <laughs> Missing your mouth. You're so old. I missed my mouth. It ripped off. One thing I did want to say that we learned a long time ago, or I learned a long time ago, you've been telling me this from the get-go, is it is not worth it to stay up late the night before a craft show to keep making and make a few extra things to make a few extra things of inventory and eyeball a few extra things and it's so much more important to get a good night's sleep you're gonna be exhausted it's a long day it's like the day of the crash out it's gonna be a really really long day it is not worth it to stay up till midnight one two o'clock in the morning and then have to be up at five to get ready for the craft show it's just not worth it and it was so tempting last night i had some last minute things that i could have thrown together i had some bats that could have been winged i had some turtles that could have been put together i had some last minute things that i really could have would have should have done that didn't get done during the week ben just got home we've been really really busy i didn't get a second youtube video out this week and i'm so sorry about that but it's it's so much more important to get a good night's sleep the night before the craft show than to spend that extra few hours putting together a few things because it's going to be so much more important to be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed in the morning because it's going to be a really long day whether you realize it or not to 
be personable with your customers and just be fresh and it's gonna be stressful regardless whether you think you're gonna be able to sleep or not because you're gonna be nervous it's more important to try to get a good night's sleep the night before the show than to stay up late yeah because <clears throat> you have to be like locked on the whole time you're at the market anytime someone comes up your interactions with them directly translate to your sales we say hello to everybody if you are tired and dreary and everything else people aren't going to want to stay they're going to feel like they are bothering you and everything else you need to be awake aware and ready to go yep so that's really 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 important and it took me a really long time to learn that that those last few items it's not it's not as important as you think it's going to be and it's not worth it and we think it's the curse of the craft fair that those items will not sell no yeah i don't i don't think we've ever had a craft fair where those items that she has stayed up late to try to get done actually sold. Yep, it is the curse of the craft fair. Well, we're all set up in a different spot. <laughs> in a different spot than what we were before. They are deep frying the bacon right there. Which we're fine with, it smells great. The problem is it'll make everything smell like that. Everything's gonna reek of bacon, which I can't have. So, so we call the coordinator, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I need to move again. Sorry. For setup, since we're set up differently, we're still in a corner. We are on a corner, which works really, really well for us. I will always take a corner if I can get it now. So this is what we are looking like. All on the corner. Ben, say hi. Hello. <laughs> Everybody say happy birthday to Ben too. I found these bucket hats in a box, so. I put these out too. Um, it is a mushroom themed festival today, so we are going heavy on the mushrooms. So, put all those out today. It's time for the ear warmers. So, we broke out the ear warmer spinner for the first time of the season. Right, babe? Right. And Ben set it all up. Look at su such a good job. He did such a good job. What a good job he did. All right. And now it's 10 o'clock and it is time to uh, start selling some plushies. Oh, we just shut down. It's pouring rain. It is torrentially <laughs> downpouring. We are just hunkering down and just waiting this one out. We all, just, go we ahead. We just got everything off the floor, all yeah. up on tables, Every, or we used a section of grid wall to lift everything up. Yeah, and, everything is off the floor and we are just <laughs> waiting it out. Because yep. it's, it's supposed to pass us by, so we're just, holding down the fort and waiting it out. Ben got a little soaked. Happy birthday. There's a sprinkle. <laughs> All right, we are packed up and zipped up. Ben, we ready to go, baby? All right. Note to self, I will not wear pants again. It rained and it is soaking up my pants like it soaks up the tablecloth. I am cold, I am wet, I am hungry. We had a good day. We had a good day. I love this show. I love this show. Nothing like finishing out a day with a rainbow in the sky. Huh? Huh? What do you think, Benjamin? Simba. Oh my god. I wish the camera would pick it up better. It's so pretty. and now there's trees. Instead of a birthday cake, Benjamin gets birthday nachos. Happy birthday. Celebratory, and I got French onion soup. If there's any surprise, we're at Wawa this morning. Shocking, I know. It is time. All right, we're on to day two. It's cold. And we're running a little late. We're running a bit behind, but we've got plenty of time, we'll be fine. Um, it's cold. Did I mention it's cold? I was really hoping that we'd get through these next two markets, this one and the one next weekend, and like not have to deal with cold shows until November because we don't have another show until November at the moment. Um, so it's cold. I was not ready for this. I was really not ready for this. It's supposed to be a really nice day today. 
I got tea, warm me up. We have to reset everything up tonight. Tonight, today, tonight, today. Can we park here? That's a driveway. We're not blocking yet. Okay. I mean, I can pull up a little further if you're concerned. I was concerned you were blocking that. So yeah, we got Wawa breakfast, we got Wawa lunch, and we're gonna be set and ready to go. It's supposed to be a beautiful day today, so as long as the sun comes out and it warms up a little bit, because again, I'm cold, um, we'll be ready to go. Let's do this. Let's do the damn thing. Benjamin. <sighs> Those sunglasses are something. Yeah, I know. Thanks. <laughs> Don't ask for your comments, Sarah. You should wear your neon pink hat, Benjamin. Yeah? You should buy me another neon pink hat, Sarah. I already bought you one. That's why I said buy me another one. Ah, tea. I'm putting, I'm tucking the keys for the house down here so that I don't have to carry them all day because I don't have pockets. No, well, don't have good pockets. You have pockets. I don't have good pockets. Let's go. We got about? we got shit to do or stuff to do. Okay. And my body's telling me it's time to shit again. <laughs> Why are you still recording? So I don't remember if I recorded in here last night, but this is how we left it. Everything's up on the tables with the grid wall, the way we left it overnight the night before. And we're all good in here. Hi there guys, I'm taking a break real, real quick just to tell you about my Dirty 30 birthday giveaway. I have some awesome prizes for you guys to win over on my Instagram, at Crochet Vision. If you're in the US, you can win this yarn bowl along with all five of the Big Twist Halloween yarns, including this one, Vamp. There's all five of them, the Spooky Season, Charging Your Crystals, Vamp, Jack-O-Lantern, and did I say spooky season? There's one more. There's five of them. All five. I have all of them. You can win them. There's also a crochet hook from Hooks and Glitter and a special surprise from Dandelion Tonic. If you're not in the U.S., don't worry. I have a pattern giveaway happening over there as well. It's going to start on October 15th and end on my 30th birthday on October 30th. So you don't want to miss it. So you head over to my Instagram at Crochet Vision. Hi there, guys. Welcome or welcome back. This is Crochet Vision, market recap. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. So this show is one of our favorites. I love this I know show. we say that about a lot of our we do. shows. <laughs> We've been saying that a lot recently. I love this show. I love this show. I love this show. I love this show. This show in particular, last year... Was terrible. No, it was, I mean... No, it, this show last year was terrible. There was a, a lunatic murderer out of jail on the loose who broke out of prison, and we still had a great show. We lost $1,300 of inventory at uh, it because of the weather. Literal murderer on the loose. Literally? And we still... We, we took after that murderer. We killed it at that <laughs> show. And so we did it again this year, and guess what? It was our best show ever. Best show Ever. Best show ever. The two days of this show have beaten out four day shows that we've done before. I this show was the best show we have ever had. I we beat our <laughs> single best day ever in a, like single like show in a single day. Record. And that was on Sunday. And it was on the Sunday. On Sunday. And then we also beat our best all time record for show by a lot. Yeah. By a lot. By a lot. This show was great. We love it. And it was not great leading up to it. No. We had... We had issues. We had... It was rough. So this show we can set up the night before. 
And we did. And we love that. I love, love, so love, nice. love being able to set up the night before. It's so nice. If you're a coordinator hearing this and you have the option to let your vendors set up the night before, let them set up the night before. It sets... It makes so many things so much easier, especially if it's a big show Ugh. where you're going to have a lot of vehicles for vendors coming in and out. We've done a lot of shows where you get equivalent numbers of vendors as we have at this one, and they make you pull your vehicle in, unload, move your vehicle, come back, set up, and they expect everyone to do it in a two-hour time frame when you're on one-way streets in the middle of downtown Philadelphia. Or, I, I mean, we've done it in other bigger cities too, but Philadelphia, the particular one I'm thinking of, Philadelphia was where it was at. And it just, it becomes... A cluster. A cluster, yeah. That's literally the word I was looking for. A cluster F. That's so, what it turns into. This event lets you set up the night before... They have the setup times staggered the night before, so it's not even like a cluster of everyone trying to get in all at once. And there's a lot of police. like A lot of police presence to keep your stuff safe. There's a lot of volunteers to help you unload your car, set your stuff up, all kinds of stuff. So anytime you can set up the night before, I will. Yep. Like, we have a market coming up this weekend, and all of a sudden I found out I could set up the night before, and I was like, Hoo-hoo! we get to set up on Saturday? That's fantastic. I love that. It's... Yep, we're gonna, I, go we're gonna go up down on Saturday and leave all our stuff. I, done, done. Maybe not everything, but but at least the big heavy stuff. It saves a bunch of time pulling stuff out of the car, setting it up, so that we can then pull the rest of our stuff out. It, it saves so much time, so that's a win. However, there was a little issue where the main coordinator of this event had a medical emergency and was in the hospital and she is okay she she's fine i needed to be moved from my original spot i was across the way from another crocheter who is absolutely lovely i love them we were across the way from each other the year before but last year both of us were kind of like why didn't they just spread us out? This event goes blocks on blocks on blocks on blocks. It's like, blocks it's well blocks. over a mile long. And so once I saw that we were next to each other, I recognized their name and I looked and I was like, we have some of the same patterns. Our prices are similar. We were very friendly with each other. Very, very sweet people. And they're very, very nice. And I love them. But I was like, we had this issue last year. I don't want to have this issue again. So a month before the event, I reached out to the coordinator. I was like, hey, could we be moved? Didn't hear anything. And then we got closer and I was told I was going to be moved. And then she didn't end up moving me and she was in the hospital. So the person who did end up moving me put me next to bacon on a stick. Which we thought was going to be great. Until... So... We were set up the night before, we unpacked everything, and bacon on a stick was not there. And you had the option of unloading the night before or the morning of. Right. Well, bacon on a stick didn't unload until the morning of. And as they were unloading, I saw a can of gasoline. Or... I don't know what it was. I don't think it was gasoline. It oh, was... it was gasoline for a, a generator. But they also had propane tanks and... All kinds of stuff to deep fry bacon. They were frying the bacon on, on like site. these on site in these giant things. And even as they were unloading their wood and their like the way that they had it set up was a reverse U with like I don't even know if they were vinyl or what the material was of their their stuff, but everything reeked of bacon. Like all of their fabric stuff smelled of bacon. And all of a sudden, I was like, we're going to have a problem here. Right. Because as many of you know, fabric, fibers, no, yarn, <laughs> it absorbs smells. And we were literally right, ne next, right to next to them. So Sarah called the coordinator's phone, which thankfully someone else was holding on to. It was one hour till show start. We and we were fully Se almost we fully were set almost up. fully set up plushies were out and bacon on a stick had just gotten there and i was like we need to move shoot so i thought i was gonna lose all day saturday i was like 
cool saturday's gonna be a wash we're gonna have to move up the street and like we're hopefully i'll be able to sell on sunday i can't have this right. and i'm really glad i stuck to my guns on this one i and and i think that this is just you need to trust yourself because i went down to bacon on a stick on sunday and we got bacon on a stick yep. on sunday and it was delicious and we loved it but my product would have been ruined. Yep. And so trust yourself. I would have rather been out my money for the table fee and not have lost all of my product and lost a day of sales than not trusted my gut. Right. And just been like, no, it's going to be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And I was like, Ben and I were sitting there like, oh no, I don't know what to do. Do we stay? Do I'm like, I don't want to feel bad. I don't want to be that person. Especially since they had already moved right. us once. They had already moved us and I knew the coordinator was already in the hospital. Like, I really didn't want to be that person. And I was like, I called them like, I'm so sorry. I really don't want to be this person. I can't stay here. I'm like, I can just set up tomorrow. I'm so sorry. I don't know what to do. Um, She was sweet as pie god bless these people um they came down with a gator now granted it normally takes us about two hours to set everything up in general and about an hour and a half to tear everything down we had an hour left before we had to be open on saturday yep. we had every we had to pack everything down into bags move it was like two blocks up the street yeah, it was like a quarter of a mile two blocks up the street and some of you guys did come and see us up the street to our new spot, which we were going to be in a different spot in the crosswalk across the street. But then we had an emergency exit with a woman with a walker yeah. um, across the street into a spot that was not a spot, which ended up being a spot, which worked out. Honestly, everything all works out for a reason. It worked out. And I'm so, so, so glad I stuck to my guns and the people with the gator, the volunteers, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank they you. Thank had you. A, they helped us tear down, move, and then helped us unpack everything. And we were torn down, moved, reset up, and open for business with five minutes to spare when we only had an hour. And it normally takes us two hours just to set up. So these volunteers and workers, excuse me. These volunteers and workers were absolutely phenomenal. And they didn't touch a plushie. Like, it was mainly just the... The grid wall, the tent, the tables. Yeah. And just moving the stuff up there. We were able to stack the bags up in the back of the gator, put the sandbags in the, in the floorboards of the gator so that they could drive up there with it. Because mainly, like, the plushies and stuff, I can get that out in an hour. That's not a problem. It's mainly the structural stuff that right. takes the longest amount of time, I think. Yeah. And, like, finding the spot and figuring out where we could go. I thank God, because I was ready to cry. I was like, oh, my God, like, what are we going to do? I don't know. Thankfully, we figured it all out. Once we had our spot, both of us were like, we got this. We can do it. And we found our spot, which ended up being the setup we were going to do. And this is why I think it's so important to have different setups ready to go, more than just one, yep. because it was it ended up being the setup we were going to do once we found out the space we were supposed to be in, but it was not the original setup we were going to do for the event. We were going to do a U, we ended up doing an L, or we could have done a front-facing setup. We had no idea, but we had a bunch of different setups ready to go, no matter what space we were going to be in, and we're ready to go, and we're able to sell when the event opened on Saturday. And once the event started, people were there. The, yeah, we, we started selling stuff like five minutes before the event started. People were already ooing and eyeing and, you know, buying stuff from, from everyone, basically. Yep. The streets of this event are packed. This event is crazy. I love this show. It's a really, really great show. It's run really, really well. And I love this coordinator. I love the people that she has helping her. And I'm so glad that she's okay. Yep. I'm I'm so grateful that she's okay. If you watch this, mwah, I'm so happy you're okay. Um, and everybody that you had helping you, mwah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, a lot of the you. people that stepped up were her kids, 
and um, other people and, and other friends and stuff yeah. like her daughter ended up being like the main contact yeah. for the rest of the event her uh, either one of her sons or both of her sons i don't know if they were both her sons or not were the guys in the gators that were helping us move everything like they were all great and even the the other volunteers we had so many people come up oh hey can i help you set this up can i help you set that up everyone you was know. just so great helping us because they knew the situation and it was just yes. It was great. It was, I was so grateful at this event just to have the help that we did. It was, it was so great. And we had volunteers the whole weekend yep. just coming up and checking up on us because it, it, I mean, they, they did last year too. It was just, yeah. it's, it's just something they do. Well they have volunteers event. that come around and, and help the vendors in any way they can. Yeah. It's a great event. That's, and that's part of the reason that it's a great event. This event also, it charges a small admission fee right. to people coming in which is actually something I want to touch on at the end of the video. This show is a themed show, yep. which I don't normally do themes for things. That is like, I do a bunch of themed shows throughout the year. I think this is the only one that I fall into the theme. If we do taco festivals, we make tacos. We'll do tacos. But though, like tacos, and then this event are really the only two. This was a mushroom theme. Yep. Event. Event. So. And I make mushrooms regardless. Like I'll make the little mushy boys. But those are really just because I make them anyway. Right. So I'm not doing anything exorbitant. Yeah, really just you'll make the bigger mushrooms. that right. like You'll make the same mushroom but bigger, which you don't normally make. And this is one of those very few events that we have found with taco festivals being the other exception where people actually seem to like want to buy items that are related to that event. Right. Like we've done like cookie festivals and, you Apple know, different apples, and... like different, different food themes or, you know, animal themes, all kinds of different events. And a lot of times she'll go and she'll find a super cute pattern or multiple patterns or I'll design for, one or design one for these, you know, themed events. And then she'll make the stuff. And guess what? People usually don't buy it. And I, and I think that's because all of the vendors at that event are gearing their stuff for that event towards the, the theme of the event. Right. And so everybody has X amount of dollars that they want to spend on that item, item, whether it's, cookies bacon whatever right you know they want to get something themed towards that but every vendor has something themed towards that so you're all competing with each other even more so than you normally would be right. as opposed to you know this jewelry vendor has a very nice set of earrings that is not on theme and this crochet vendor has a very nice plushie that's not ducks. on theme oh i can get both of those because that wasn't what I was allotting for my cookie theme right. purchase right. or whatever it is. This event though, and taco festivals that we've done are the exceptions. Right. People at this event and at taco festivals go nuts right. over the themed things for there, which I'm happy for, you know? But I, I just think like, test the waters when yeah. they're doing themed festivals because i know like there's there's garlic fest and oh, there's yeah. bacon fest and there, there's all these different things and now granted i haven't done bacon or garlic fest but i'm just throwing these things out there that caution to the wind when you're signing up for themed festivals that you're going to spend all of your time making these things that you're going to be then stuck with for four years like i i just don't right. want that to be you're so excited for this show Make sure that you're also making everything else that you would normally make for every other show because it's still going to sell at these other shows. Yeah. I also feel the same way about Halloween and Christmas. Yep. And Little, Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving. Little Johnny is going to like dinosaurs all year round. Yep. I'm not going to specifically buy Little Johnny Santa. It, sometimes they right. will, but it, it kind of just... That's how I feel about specific holidays yep. and specific festivals. I think one of the few exceptions for holidays, um, at least for us, is like 4th of July and Memorial Day. We'll do like red, white, and blue theme things. But that's not even really that much of an exception because people, like a lot of the times, you look at our turtles and stuff like that. They're multicolored. I don't even make them. 
Well, I mean, you've had the red, white, and blue turtles before. It's just yarn I buy. That's that's what I'm saying. Like it's just it's just another multicolored yarn. So on Fourth of July, we'll like try to push those ones a little bit, but it's not even uh, that big of a deal. I don't. <laughs> I'm glad you I do. Guess I do. I don't. I don't even. But yeah, that's that's just something that we've noticed that at a lot of these themed events, uh, people will go overboard trying to get the theme stuff made, and then they end up maybe not selling out of their other stuff, but they could have put more time into the other stuff, and then they're bringing the same stuff back the next year. And and it's just I don't want to be stuck with garlic for four years right i don't know why four is my number right now but i i just that's just something that's in my mind like i do a peach festival and i made peaches one year and then i had peaches for six a, months yeah to, that we were trying to get rid of and then i ended up selling them as emojis like it yeah. i don't want to have to rebrand what i made for one festival to rebrand it for something else right which is yeah yeah that's fair I also, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to everybody who came out. I know a few of you guys did come and say hi. And I know a few of you guys said, I saw you at the Mushroom Festival, but I didn't want to say hi. Guys, don't be afraid to come and say hi to me. I don't always have time. I know sometimes it, it does get a little crazy and I am a little bit busy, but don't be afraid to say hi to me. Um, I am more than welcome to say hi and take a picture. Sometimes I won't be able to take a picture, but I am more than happy to say hi to me if you do happen to find my festival. Um, but I am more than happy to say hi. But thank you so, so much to everybody who came out. And I know I did meet a bunch of you at this specific show because it is such a huge show. Yeah, it's so, a huge festival in our area. In our in our specific area. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, I do just want to say a huge, huge thank you. And if we seem like little awkward human beings because because we, we are, are awkward human we beings. are <laughs> the most awkward you'll you'll meet me in person and i don't know what to do with myself because yeah, i'm we'll be awkward like, as crap you're like I, I don't know what to do with my hands like <laughs> it's just you're welcome so if, i'm awkward if, if you say <laughs> if you say if you say like hi i know you from youtube you're like we'll we'll be like uh-huh great and the last time it happened i was literally like Thank you right. so much. Thank you so much. Like, it takes it a hot takes second. It takes a minute. Like, I'm like, oh, right, I do that. Like, when we're at these markets, we're in a totally different mindset oh. than, than when we're sitting here and we're talking to you guys. So, But please, please don't please, be afraid yeah, to say. Don't let that discourage you. No. We will most likely be awkward for a hot second. And then we'll be like, oh, right, I'm a human being. I know how to human being. Yeah, it takes me a, a hot second to human being. Yeah. Yep. So. Thank you to everyone but that thank you came so out to this one and people that have come out to other ones yes, and that have seen us and said hi. Out. You yes. know, I think we've, oh man, we've had it happen like at like four or five events now where people are like, I saw you on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram. And they're like, uh, we do those things, right? Thank you so much yes. for supporting it. Like, you know, and it just takes a hot second. So thank you so much to everyone. It's it's just, it's so weird. Like, this doesn't no, no, no. feel it's, like real life. No, it, just, it doesn't feel like yeah, real life. Not what you're it, doing is weird. No, it's, no, 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 no. It feels no, no. weird to us because this is just us talking with each other. Like, we started doing this as, like, a way to help us remember things right. for our markets. And so then we were like, oh, let's just put this on YouTube, too. I mean, too. I started TikTok for... I, I don't... It, it was just... I, I was trying not to scroll, honestly. And then yeah, it, it... You're stuck at home during COVID. Right. I was stuck at home. So this still... It, it's almost a bit of imposter syndrome. Like, I, I'm still... And I'm also not interacting with people every day still. It's more of just me and my camera. So it, it's... All... <laughs> it, it feels yeah. so silly, but I'm, I'm really not. So it does take me a few minutes to human. And I'm so sorry that I'm not just this when i'm with people but i'm like oh right i do that thing okay cool i can be a human it, it just it takes me a few seconds and i'm really really an awkward human being and i'm not just this all the time i'm really an awkward person and i wouldn't say you're awkward it just takes us a second it takes sometimes. us a second to realize so if if we seem awkward at first yeah it's because we're processing that someone knows us that we don't know just because we've never actually like you guys see us we don't see you right like you know it's... it just takes us a hot second so if we seem awkward when you first meet us 
we are very sorry. We're also just awkward. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm not apologizing for being awkward. I'm awkward <laughs> as shit. I'm I'm not I'm not gonna apologize for that. English. I'm not gonna apologize for being awkward. I'm awkward. I'm I'm really awkward. I'm I'm really, really awkward. But yes, thank you to everyone that Yes, but thank you. Out. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm weird. You're welcome. And please don't let that discourage you no, from saying hi. Like no. we act, we really like it when people tell us. Hey, oh, we love it. Oh, we, we love it. You know, we 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 know you from YouTube. Instagram, oh, I love TikTok, it. Whatever. I'm just really it just, weird. <laughs> when we're like locked into that, we're at a market mindset, and then all of a sudden someone's mentioning our YouTube channel. It's like, oh right, that's a thing. Okay, hi, how are you? Yeah, like, like it just takes a um, second. I think Rebecca, you came up to me. And, and like we took a picture and everything i was like it took me three seconds i'm like you're like can we take a picture i'm like yeah absolutely and then it like took me like five seconds to be like let's do it in front of the sign that would be better let's do that like it, it, it just yeah. it takes me like to get into the right mindset mindset yeah i'm awkward <laughs> if this hasn't gotten to the fact that we're awkward and weird yeah well, we've just been talking about this for five we're minutes now weird i mean <laughs> Is your neck okay? Do you need an Advil, you old man? Because it was your birthday. I made you do a market on your birthday. I would say that I need an Advil. But I've already taken six, 1,600 milligrams of that and 1,000 milligrams of Tylenol today. Babe. So, no, ben. I don't need more. Ben. Ben fell asleep on the couch and hurt his neck because he's an old, an old man. man. I also got spiked on my head at work. Well, so told you not to go there, but no, that was on that was on Wednesday. That wasn't today. You have things you want to share. Yes, admission fees at markets. Love them, hate them. Let's talk about it for a hot second. So. A lot of times, admission fees at a market will discourage people from coming, but... Normally, when there's an admission fee at a market, I will not sign up. Yeah. A lot of times, admission fees are too much for what the actual market is, and it will end up discouraging people from coming. And then the people that do come are willing to spend less money, a lot of times, but... There are some exceptions. This market is absolutely one of those exceptions. The admission fee for this market is very low. It was five dollars. I think last year it was three. I think it was five. I'm pretty sure. Was it five? I'm pretty sure it was five. Was it five? I, sure it was five. I didn't even know. I know this year. I know this year it was five. I didn't even know there was an admission fee for this for show. And um, the people that still came, I was like, oh, there was an admission fee. I wouldn't right. have known that there wasn't because there were that many people. Right. So this festival has a very low admission fee. And they use that admission fee to better the experience of everyone there. Yeah, they do. They have porta johns every couple hundred feet. Those porta johns are cleaned at night, before, like in between the two days of the event. I, like I went and used it on Sunday morning, spotless, absolutely spotless. There was never more than like a five minute line for the porta johns because they have so many of them available. They have so many volunteers and workers going around making sure that trash cans are constantly emptied, that people are being helped when they need it, all kinds of stuff. You, So many festivals and events, the trash cans, they get piled up and then trash is blown all over the place. The porta johns get disgusting. You can't find help when you need it. You can't find someone who works there when there's some sort of issue. They have so many volunteer firemen, EMTs, police officers, just general volunteers that are walking around helping people with anything. They do a great job. They make that, they take that $5 admission fee and they stretch it so far to make sure that your experience is great. And because it's so low, it doesn't hinder people from getting there. And then on top of that, we had some friends that came to see us this weekend and they had forgotten that it was cash only to pay. And they said, hey, I've got $3 and I can go to the ATM right inside and get the rest. And the person's like, all right, cool. Just honor system. Just bring me the, the, the other $7 when, when you get it. And they let them in. And granted, they did get the $7 and they brought it back to them. But 
that's the kind of thing, like, admission fees have a place when it comes to markets, and this one does an exceptional job of using that they admission had, fee. They had cooks from Food Network coming, like, one of the, the guests people mm -hmm. like like there were a bunch of things that happen at this show that yep. i mean i don't know about because i'm vending but there's a whole bunch of competitions and different things that you yep. can do one of the the head people i was like oh i recognize her from food network yeah um i don't know who she was but like last year i didn't recognize the people and this year i was like oh my gosh that's i, I like i recognized her face yeah they had competitions they had eating contests yeah like, they do they do cooking competitions they do eating competitions like they get local celebrities to come and do those things and they're paying these people yeah like a, they're, they're not just relying on these people and, to just come and do it out of the goodness of their heart they're taking these five dollar admissions and the booth fees that the vendors pay which we do pay a lot for this vendor on, fee, and, and but, honestly like but it's so worth it like honestly like there's probably 300 easily craft vendors mm -hmm. throughout. Like, this event spans at least a mile. It's yeah. a huge, huge, huge show. I paid for this event in March. And that's another thing that this event does that not a lot of events do. They have an early bird admission fee for vendors. I was like, I'm sorry, what? And they knocked $25 off the price of the event for early bird. I was like, done? <laughs> like, but so Okay great like it, if you're it, an event coordinator out there and you're thinking about charging an admission fee think about what is that admission fee gonna do for the people that you're catering to which are the customers coming in and the vendors who are vending there those vendors are also your customers yeah and this event does an absolutely spectacular job of taking those fees and making it so that this event could be the best event possible. It's, they do such a good job at this show. And quite frankly, like if something were to happen overnight, I honestly think if I were to take that to the coordinator, they would take that so seriously. Yep. Because there are police strolling the streets. I think everybody knows that at this show. It's, this town takes a lot of pride in their town in general. And it's, it's run really, really well. This show has been going on for years and years and years, and it's just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and better and better and better, and it's it's fantastic. I don't think there will be a year in the foreseeable future where we will not be at this event. I agree. This event is absolutely and I will on pay, our calendar every year. I will pay the extra to be on a corner next year. Yep. It was a happenstance this year. I... At the beginning of this year, I wasn't ready to start paying extra for corners and open space the way you were I was actually it. opposed to getting was, corner I spots until was. a little over a year ago. I was because it it was scary, um, and it was open to theft, and I was a little nervous about it. I feel a lot better about it now, and we're prepped better, and we have learned a lot more, and we've yep. done a lot more, and we have a lot more experience now. Yep, and. I feel a lot better about it now yep. that in March I wasn't ready to do a corner and now I will take it anytime it's offered to me. I will absolutely be on a corner. Absolutely. Please give me a corner Yep. that next year I will pay the extra to be on a corner. And, and, and it, it was happenstance that we had this space and I was like, cool, we're doing a corner setup done. But I think that's because we've been on the beach so much Right. that we've been an open you on the beach so much that I feel safe doing it that way. Yep. But had I not done that, and had we not been doing that, I wouldn't have done it. Yep. So if you like this video, guys, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell. That way you'll be notified when we do these market recaps, when we do shows. Our next show isn't until November. Yeah. But these videos are kind of staggered and they're delayed a little bit. So we'll get more. The, the, there'll be content coming out <laughs> in, in between, you know. Um, we have a lot of prep to do because we sold a lot. Yeah. So, you know, we've got more stuff coming. Don't you yep. worry. Comment below. Let us know what you liked about this video, what you didn't like about this video. And uh, who wants to play Yarn Chicken? You know, this sticker and others exclusively available at CrochetVision.com. Check it out. Along with my crochet patterns and finished items. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Hello!
Oh! <laughs> she did that on purpose. I told her to count to three after I sit back. All right, now I'm going to smell there. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> They couldn't see it on camera. I made sure that my hand was blocking it, so it just looked okay. like that. Okay, good. Benjamin! That's not nice. I didn't do anything. I was just showing you my nails. I got them done. On By the 10th of never. By me. He was flipping me the bird. <sighs> ba -ba -ba bird, bird, bird. The bird is. <laughs> oh my god, editing these is going to be so much fun. Good. As much fun as making them the first time. <laughs> if I don't make it fun for me, it's going to be miserable for you, so. <laughs> That's fair. Hi there, guys. Welcome or welcome back. This is Crochet Vision Market Recap. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. I do it like this. <laughs> okay the way you're supposed to do it. Yeah, it's an inside joke. Congratulations. My cousin is a librarian at an elementary or middle school. And she had a student years ago that when the student would sneeze, kept sneezing into his hands and then touching the books. And she was like, oh, you know, you shouldn't do that. Gets germs all over the place. You gotta sneeze into your elbow. It helps stop it. And then she had him for a couple more years. And any time he would sneeze after that, he would go, oh, oh, I do it like this. <laughs> and obviously I've never met the kid. So that's just like me trying to be a little kid. But I do it like this. So, so you're trying to be a little kid. So now every time I sneeze and there's someone around, I go, I do it like this. I have never, ever, ever in the... That's false. Almost 11 years that we've been together, heard you say that. That's absolutely not true. Yep. I say it all the time to you. No, you don't. I do. No, I absolutely you don't. do. No, you don't. Absolutely do. Nope. Absolutely do. Okay. Okay. We've been together 11 and a half years. Okay. I say it all the time. Literally, almost every single time I sneeze, I go, I do it like this. I have never heard you say that. That's a weird way of finding out that your wife doesn't pay attention to you. Maybe because when you sneeze when you're around me, you're always sick and a little biatch. <laughs> I was aiming for your cup. Oh, well, you missed. I missed. Yeah, I know. I know I missed. Yeah. Because I'm right. Anyway... Oh, stop. You missed that time. You did not miss that time. You got right in there. That was great. Thank you. I couldn't even see it, too. Your hair was in the way. Thanks for that. So, this show... <laughs> Three minutes in. Now we're starting the market recap. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> 